The only resolution is for the aspirations of both sides to be met through two states where Israelis and Palestinians each live in peace and security. We have to begin a phased withdrawal, have our combat troops out by March 31st of next year, and initiate the kind of diplomatic surge that is necessary in the surrounding region to make sure that everybody is carrying their weight. And that is what I will do on day one as President of the United States if we have not done it uh, in the intervening months. So I often hear people say that Obama was a good president or he was a better president than we've had in the past. And maybe there's some small, small truth to that. But honestly, the way I look at it is he's pretty much been the same president we've had for a long time. And that's a corporate-influenced, uh, war-driven president. And it really hasn't changed. And, you know, you saw the clip at the beginning where Obama's promising he's going to withdraw from troops from Iraq and he's going to solve things in the Middle East and yada yada. Bullshit. It's all bullshit. And I, sh I cannot say that he's a good president because he was not. He was a terrible president. And I'm going to outline to you why and why he's actually gotten worse over time. So the first obvious one is the drone bombings in the Middle East. Um, we were doing it before Obama, but he kind of made it modern and normal. He normalized it quite a bit. And now we're just doing it all the time, and we don't even think about it. We just we just bomb wherever we want, pretty much. Just Hey, we'll just bomb it. That'll, that'll fix all our problems. Um, but if you just look at Pakistan alone, he hit Pakistan 373 times during his time in office. Over 2,000 killed, over 300 of those civilians. So that's the reality. Um, our leaders, they don't, they don't value life. So killing that person that we're trying to kill is way more important than that civilian's life we kill. And that civilian isn't, that's, you know, they they probably don't try to kill civilians, but if we do, or if they, if they do, they just look the other way. They don't really care that much because it's way more important to kill the person that's targeted. And usually they get some type of intelligence that says, Okay, we have targeted this person that is a terrorist leader, this or that, something along those lines. And then they just bomb them, and whoever whoever's around them, whoever gets killed, you know, try and keep the casualties down, but, you know, we got to do what we got to do. And that's, that's why we don't value life in this culture, because at the top, the leaders don't value it, then that trickles down to everyone in society. And <clears throat> that's why unarmed black guys can be shot and no one really says anything. But then you look at Afghanistan, and we'll look at Afghanistan just from 2015 onwards. And Afghanistan was hit 635 times, killing 2,400 people approximately, and roughly 120 civilians. That's just from 2015 onwards. Now, I'm not even going to mention Iraq, or Syria, or Yemen, or any of the other places we've bombed. But that right there should just give you an idea of how our foreign policy operates and this is how it's been for a long time but Obama was the chief drone man and he really made bombing in the Middle East a normal thing to do so that one's all on, that one's kind of an Obama for normalizing it um, but just kind of an, as an aside um, there's kinda of like a chain of command that everyone has to oversee before the bombs actually are able to be dropped by Obama um, and the, la the last line of uh, the command is committee. And guess who's on that committee? Oh, yeah, Hillary Clinton, of course. She was a secretary of state for four years. She's obviously not on it now, but she was. So that would be her part in all this. But then you can go back to June of 2013, a report from the Americans for Safe Access. They found that the DEA, under the first four years of the Obama administration, carried out 270 medical marijuana raids. And that was 12 more than the entire 12 years prior. In 2013, those were the numbers for those the last four years. I mean, with all the science, you know, everything that we know about pot and, and marijuana and how it's not, da not that dangerous, doesn't kill anybody, helps a lot of people... And really all, all he's doing is he's interfering with state laws because it's legal in those states. Those are legal medical marijuana dispensaries in those states. It's just illegal federally. 
Um, but Obama's got to go in. Got to gotta take care of him. That pot is dangerous, man. It's dangerous, dangerous. Also, you have to look at just... He's cozy with Wall Street. Let's be honest. No problem with Wall Street. They, they crashed the economy back in 2008. Obama did nothing. Didn't prosecute them. Made sure they stayed deregulated. Could continue what they're doing. No problems there. And then you look, how, how did he treat whistleblowers over his time? Edward Snowden? He's in Russia. He can't even come back to America because, America because he knows what's going to happen to him if he does. Chelsea Manning? She's in prison right now. They're torturing her because she exposed something about the government. And that's, that's what happens when, <laughs> when you expose something about the government. When you try and tell the truth about the way things are, and when you actually try and do some good, we, there, there should be patriotic acts. But Obama criminalizes them and makes them out to be absolutely horrible people. Um, and th it, this goes further than what he's d already done. You can look right now. Right now he is pushing for the TPP hard. He's pushing harder than anybody. This is, kills the working class, kills the middle class. It's more or outsourcing of jobs. And Obama's the chief man on this. And... Clinton may not even need to do anything. You know, NAFTA was passed by Bill Clinton, but Clint, Hillary Clinton may not even need to step in for the TPP. Obama may have this one all on his own, the way he's going. And then what about the Dakota Access Pipeline? He gave a statement a couple days ago, and it was the most sullen, Obama-like, neutral, disappointing statement you could ask for. And it, it just, it really just shows Obama's true colors. You know, right now there's cops and people from the National Guard macing protesters, pepper spraying them, uh, brutalizing them, caging them, putting putting numbers on them, um, throwing rifles in their faces, intimidating them like crazy, all at the behest of a corporation. And where's Obama? Where's the President of the United States at a moment like this? He's absent. Doesn't even really want to comment on the matter. They'll push for the TPP. But, you know, when it comes to the pipeline, you know, they give me money, and eh, I'm going to be silent on it. I'm not going to say much. I'm going to be as neutral as I possibly can. So when people say that Obama was a good president, or he was so much better than the other presidents we've had in the past, I have to vehemently disagree with you, because he didn't do anything different than them. We're still in war, banks are still deregulated, economy's still shit. Um, and arguably things are getting worse, especially in the last, really the last year or two. But even if all that wasn't enough to sway you, WikiLeaks has some pretty revealing stuff on Obama. You know, it was mostly on Clinton, but there's definitely some on our president too. And that was an email from Michael Froman, who was a former executive um, of Citigroup. And this was back, this email was back from his first campaign back in 08. And it was directly to Obama. It was basically asking him if he had looked over what he sent, Podesta, um, which was his list. That's basically what the letter to Obama is saying. And that's relevant because another WikiLeaks dump, which was the Podesta emails, this was uh, an email from Froman to John Podesta, basically outlining a list of top cabinet positions for Obama. And that list of cabinet members, or cabinet positions, was correctly identified as Her Eric Holder for Justice Department, Janet Napolitano for Homeland Security, Robert Gates for Secretary of Defense, Rahm Emanuel for Chief of Staff, Eric Shinseki for Veterans Affairs, and a couple others. But I mean, that's it. Obama gets a letter from an executive at Citigroup, who's one of his donors, saying, hey, choose these, um, this is my list of cabinet positions, did you get a chance to look them over? He probably sent a uh, an email back that said, yeah, I did. And what does he do? That's who he appoints. That's how corruption works. He gets influenced by the donors. The donors tell him to pick people that they specifically want or do policy positions that we want, and they do it. The candidates do it because they're bought corporatists. That's all they are. Democrats, Republicans, doesn't matter. So no, Obama was not a good president, and we really need to change the system we have because it's, it's destroying our society, and it's gotten to a point where People are willing to elect Donald Trump. So it's time to wake up, people, and it's time to fight against this corrupt establishment we have. And when I say establishment, I'm talking about 
the bankers who control the influx of money into our civilization, or the corporations, the oil corporations who control our use of energy, or the politicians who are simply pawns in the economic elite's game that they're playing. Those are the people we're fighting against. That's the establishment. And when you start recognizing where these problems come from, who are the ones who are causing these problems, why do they occur, how can we fix them, how can we better society, and if we go from there, and we start to really recognize the true root problems, then I have high hopes for our species, and uh, I think we can pull through this. It's a trying time in human history, but we just got to stand up on the real.